Hey everyone, I'm back with another handy dandy insight about rationality and how to apply it to your life. This one was inspired by the psychologist Paul Bloom, who wrote the book How Pleasure Works. It's a great book, I've plugged it before on the Rationally Speaking podcast. Uh, it's ostensibly about the science of why we enjoy what we enjoy, but it also has these really fundamental insights about how we perceive the world. So we have what Bloom calls an essentialist bias in that we instinctively perceive objects and other people as having these fundamental essences inside them uh, that constitute their true nature. They're very abstract, these essences. Um, they're not supposed to be made of atoms or anything material, but nevertheless they feel very real. Um, this is something you can see even in very young children. As Bloom describes, if you show children a picture of, uh, say, a porcupine being transformed into a cactus, Children will look at that and say, yeah, but it's still really a porcupine. You might recognize this logic, by the way, as the same kind of logic that allows for a soul or any kind of conception of personal identity in which um, you continue to exist when your brain and body are destroyed or when your brain and body are swapped with another person's brain and body, a la the movie Freaky Friday or its recent god-awful incarnation, The Change-Up. But setting aside all the metaphysical stuff, this bias is actually really common in the way that we characterize objects and other people in our everyday life. So when we're thinking like essentialists, we don't say he lies a lot. We say he is a liar. And um, that might seem like a semantic quibble, but it actually has a profound impact on the way that we think about other people. When you call someone a liar uh, or refer to someone as a liar, uh, first of all, it feels more loaded. Um, labels tend to come with connotations and emotional weight. Um, but it also magnifies the property of lying into something fundamental to that person's identity. This is why, for example, when Bloom worked with children with autism, he was reminded to refer to them as children with autism instead of as autistics. And I can understand why that would sound off-puttingly politically correct to some people, but the fact is that calling uh, the, the word autistic as a noun really does emphasize that the property of autism uh, fundamentally changes the nature uh, of the child, as opposed to just being one property uh, among many properties of that child. On a lighter note, if you saw the movie Memento, you'll remember the character Shelby um, freely admitting to having killed people in the past, but insisting, oh, but I'm not a killer. So labels matter. They also tend to imply a kind of permanence um, or fixedness that, that might not actually be there. Bloom talks about a study in which Researchers told a, a group of five-year-old children about a girl named Rose who often ate carrots. And then half of the children were also told Rose is a carrot eater. And the children who were told that Rose is a carrot eater were much more likely to predict that Rose would continue to eat carrots in the future, uh, even if her parents explicitly discouraged it. Uh, so I thought that this concept of essentialism and the essentialist bias was uh, fascinating in its own right. It's, a, it's a, this philosophical worldview that's like built into our brains, but it also clearly has implications for rationality and is really damaging if your goal is to have as clear a picture of the world as possible. Um, just by describing someone with a noun instead of uh, describing their actions or their traits, you're inflating the importance and the severity of that property. You're um, taking on all of the baggage of that label and your opinion of that person. And you're biasing yourself to see that property as being more fixed and permanent than it might actually be. It also occurred to me recently that this concept is, uh, it shows up in cognitive behavioral therapy, or CBT, as well. CBT is based on, or one of the tenets of CBT is that depression and anxiety and other chronic negative emotions are caused in large part by distortions in the way that we see ourselves in the world. And essentializing, or as CBT calls it, labeling, is one of those distortions. So if you describe mistakes that you've made using sentences that begin, I am, or I'm such a, then you're labeling. Um, if your business venture goes under and you say, I'm a failure, instead of that failed, that's labeling. Or if you overindulge and polish off an entire tub of ice cream and you say, I'm a pig, instead of that was a mistake, um, you're labeling. And labeling clearly serves to make us feel worse about ourselves, but it's also totally counterproductive if your goal is to actually change your ways. Um, as I was saying, the essentialist bias causes us to see things as more permanent and unchanging than they might actually be, which is exactly the opposite of what you want if your goal is to motivate yourself to improve. 
and obviously people use labels to describe other people as well. Um, they refer to people as idiots or losers or jerks. Um, and that's also a, a distortion. Um, it's unfair to the people you're labeling, but it's also unfair to yourself as a rationalist um, in that it deprives you of an accurate view of how the world really is.